what's up friends, it's James. Welcome back for another power yoga class. So we'll take things slow and deep with this class and then we get to focus on our strength, our flexibility, our balance, and then our mindfulness. I want you to start out at standing and you can have your feet on parallel at hip bone distance with one another or bring your big toes together and have a little bit of space back between your heels. On an inhale, just bend the knees, stretch and reach your spine up tall, take the shoulders up, lengthen. As you exhale, just roll the shoulder heads down away from the ears on the back. Release the weight of the arms, close your eyes. Take your air all the way down to empty. And then breathe into your low belly and your low back. Breathe up into your mid abdomen, to your mid back, right into your low ribs. Breathe all the way to your chest, all the way to your shoulders. And once you've got that full breath, just hold and relax. And then on your exhale, we'll make this sound like we're quieting someone. Shh. Once you're down to empty, again, take that breath into your low belly and your low back. Pause there, breathe into your mid-abdomen and your mid-back. Hold there, fill all the way up to the chest, all the way to the shoulders. Just relax, hold the breath, maybe sip a little more air in. And then that same exhale. We'll start our ujjayi breathing from the bottom. So inhale through the nose, just like you're sipping the air in. And then from the top, exhale out like you're fogging up a mirror. And keep this going at your own pace. And I want you to let your breath be your guide for your practice and then just take what works for me and leave the rest behind. Blink the eyes open to a soft gaze up front. And on an inhale, lengthen and lift your arms up nice and tall in space. Breathe in. And on your exhale, cactus your arms. Let your shoulder blades pull in towards one another. Have a slight bend into your knees. And then staying with the breath, just tilt your chest up in space. Let those shoulder blades draw in. Shoulder heads are down away from the ears on the back. So you're supporting this bend, pressing to the feet. Again, that slight bend into the knees. On the inhale, lengthen back up tall in space. And on the exhale, just twist open to the left. So bring your left hand behind you and your right arm forward. Bend your right hand and then hook the right hand to reach and grab onto the back of that left hip. It's on the outside of your left hip. Bend your back left elbow and take the back of your left hand and then hook it to the front of your right hip. And as you're twisting, you're letting your right hand pull left hip forward and letting left hand pull right hip backwards. Nice, get all the way down to the end of the breath that you're on. We'll inhale to reach back up tall, extend. On the exhale, take it a single back bend with that cactus of the arms. Inhale to reach back up tall in space. And on your exhale, now twist open to the right, so right hand behind you, left arm forward. Your left hand will reach to the outside of that right hip and start to pull it forward. Back of your right hand reaches behind you, hooks to the, the front of that left hip and pulls backwards. Gaze is back across that right shoulder, pressing to the ground, lengthening up through your spine. Nice, take one more deep breath into it. With your exhale, get all the way down to empty. And then inhale, reach back up tall in space. Exhale, cactus your arms, baby back bend, lift through the chest. Inhale to reach back up tall, gazes forward. And on your exhale, hinge out from your hips and take your swan dive all the way down into your forward fold. Release your head at the bottom. Inhale to reach halfway up, lengthen through the spine, gazes to the ground. We're holding here for a few rounds of breath. You're either pressing to your shins or to your thighs. Maybe your fingertips are to the ground. 
you want to make sure the knees aren't locked, slight bend in them. And as your spine extends forward, let your shoulder blades tone in towards center line. Find that length all the way through the back of the neck. Awesome, friends. On your next exhale, just fold down deep. Let the fingertips touch the ground and give your head a slow nod. Yes. Take a slow side to side nod. No, allowing the weight of your head just to release from your spine. And then with the weight in your head and your arms, slowly vertebrae by vertebrae, roll up. Head is the last thing to come up. When it does, inhale to reach back up tall in space. On the exhale, cactus open. Take that baby back bend. Inhale, reach up tall. And as you exhale, twist open to the left. Inhale, reach up tall. Exhale, cactus open. Inhale, extend up. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, reach back up tall. Exhale, cactus open. Inhale, extend up. And on the exhale, hinge out and take that swan dive forward fold. Nice work. With your inhale, come to that half lift. Hold here. Bend your knees a little bit deeper. Keep the shape in your spine and start to fly your arms backwards, pointing your fingers to the wall behind you. Bend your elbows up a little bit in space. Tone those shoulder blades in. Find the strength of your core. Find the strength of your shoulders for your upper spine. Feel into your glutes. Find the strength of your legs toning around your knees. Awesome. And then on an inhale, reach your arms forward and up in space so we come right into chair pose. So you can have your arms so that they're framing your ears, or you could cactus your arms open so you've got the, that goalpost position. You want to feel the weight coming back down in space, and then the chest is lifting up, and we've got that engagement in your legs, in your glutes, in your core, right up to your shoulder blades. Breathe in here, and on your exhale, go back to that shape we had earlier. So spine parallel to the ground, gaze down. Nice deep bend in the knees, fingertips pointing backwards. Awesome. End of the breath. Inhale, reach back up into chair. And with your exhale, now twist open to the left. So reach your left arm behind you. Your right arm is forward. Your knees will want to twist over to the left. Keep your knees squared up in front of you so that your hips are squared to the front of the room. Then feel that left shoulder peeling back in space. Inhale, reach back up tall. Breathe in. Exhale, take the bow. Fly your arms back. Spine parallel to the ground. Nice. Inhale, reach up in space, chair pose. And now exhale, twist to the right. Reach your right arm behind you. Left arm is forward. Again, keep those knees squared up to the front of the room. Your hips are squared up to the front of the room. Beautiful breathing. Get down to the end of the breath that you're on. Inhale, mountain. Reach up nice and tall in space. Exhale, cactus open, baby back bend. Perfect. Inhale to reach back up tall, breathe in. And on the exhale, hinge out from your hips and take your swan dive to your forward fold. Inhale just to one single half lift. Exhale, refold. And now with your feet at hip bone distance, take opposite hand to grab the outside of opposite elbow or bicep and create a ragdoll frame that you can just let sway side to side or lightly rock back and forth with. Remind the weight of your head just to relax out here. Arms are nice and heavy. And just working with that breath. Bring your hands down at the ground and start to work back into a plank position. Fix your hips right on level with your shoulders. And then rather than your elbows locked, a slight, slight uh, micro bend in them, bicep tone into center line, gaze is down to the ground, super strong with the core. 
On your next exhale, hinge forward, lower halfway down. You can also do this on your knees with your ankles crossed up behind you. This is Chaturanga Dandasana. We're just holding at that half lift, gaze is down, hovering off the ground, you got it. Use an inhale to pull back up tall in space. And again, with that exhale, hinge forward and lower halfway down, Chaturanga Dandasana. If you're on your knees with your ankles crossed, as we all now inhale to lift back up to the top of the plank, just avoid bending your hips. Last one, friends. Exhale halfway down. Use your breath. Lower all the way from the end there. You're great. Okay, and then Bhujangasana, low cobra. Tops of the feet to the ground. Slide your palms a little lower down. So they're framing right in next to your mid ribs. And then squeeze your elbows in and lift the chest up off the ground. Create length through the back of the neck. Hips are down to the ground, pressing, feet are pressing. Chest is lifting. Shoulder blades pulling in towards one another. And now lift the feet up off the ground. Fly your arms back for locust pose. Elbows bend up slightly. Shoulder blades draw in. Use that breathing. You got it. Next exhale, release to the ground. And we're going to meet up in a plank and then back into down dog. You can always go to a tabletop and then down dog if you prefer that. And then inside of your down dog, take your feet out a little bit wider than you usually would. And I want you to step your left foot up a couple of inches. And then just press your right heel down towards the ground as you bend super deep into your left knee. Press into your hands so you're lengthening your hips back and up in space. We'll switch that out so left foot goes back a couple inches, right foot comes forward a few inches, and then just press into your left heel as you bend into your right knee. Hips drawing back and up in space. Relaxing the weight of the head to look back behind you. Cool, all right, step both your feet back. We'll find that regular downward facing dog. So relax the weight of your head. You want to feel your biceps are, pin, are hold, you know, kind of uh, toning in towards center line. And one of the cues that you often hear, I use it a ton, is like you're holding a beach ball between your arms. So those holding in towards center line. And then feel spread out into the circle of your palms. Lift the hips up super tall. And then feel that length coming down through your legs from the length of your spine, from the height of the hips. Inhale, right leg back and up, three-legged down dog. Press your heel up and back into the wall behind you. Stay with your breath. And then take an exhale to bring your right knee over to your left elbow. So now it's more like we're in a plank, shoulders right above your hands. Lift that knee up nice and tall. We're here for a couple rounds of breath. Nice, inhale, reach back up in space. And on this exhale, bring the knee over to the right elbow or tricep. Same idea though, like you're in plank. Lift that knee up nice and tall, stay with the breath. Inhale, reach back up. And on the exhale, step up into a low lunge position. Get your knee right over your heel and then we'll rise up into a high crescent lunge, bringing our arms up nice and tall. Ball of the left foot is pressing to the ground, your heel is off of the ground. Let those thighs tone in towards center line to stabilize here, and then reach straight up through your arms, pinkies forward, thumbs back. Shoulder heads relax down, gazes forward. We wanna feel the strength in that front leg so it's wrapping around that right knee. Feel your glute engaged, pulling back away from your knee. Beautiful friends, on your next exhale, 
twist to the right, so right hand behind you, left arm forward. You can let the back knee hover a little bit deeper if you want. Spine is straight up in space, gazes to the right or looking back across those right fingertips. Use the breath. When your exhales come, you'll be able to twist a little bit deeper. And to exalt this, we'll take the back right hand and either bring it to grab onto the left hamstring or press the back of it into your low back. And then left arm reaches up and the gaze can continue to look to the side or it can go up where that left hand is reaching. Nice breathing. Take an inhale here, and on the exhale, we'll take beggar's bowl, where we'll hover the back knee just off the ground, reach your arms forward, spine is straight up in space. Keep that strength in your legs, you're doing awesome. Nice inhales, nice exhales. Inhale, rise up into mountain out of that. And that can be a tricky lift, right? Coming all the way from that deep lunge, rising up into your one-legged mountain. Your left knee is bent at 90. You got your thigh bone plugged back into your hip and then you're pressing into that right foot and reaching your arms up tall in space, staying with that breath. We're gonna work this one-legged mountain into warrior three with hands at the heart center. I'll also show you an alternative if you wanna use a block, it'd be out to the top left side of your mat. Hands essentially come into your heart center from that one-legged mountain and then you start to take your spine to a half lift and press your left heel to the wall behind you. If you wanna use the block, just take it down into your left hand. Right hand can press into your thigh and then you can stabilize yourself to the ground and to that leg. You could also do both hands into that standing thigh if you like. If hands are at heart center, we can leave them there or we can start to fly them forward in space. Feel the front of the left hip bone pointing to the ground, left toes pointing down, then lifting that left heel up on level with your hip, it's keeping strong with your spine as you breathe. Gaze down, crown reaching forward. Last round of breath. Inhale, rise up, one-legged mountain. And then on the exhale, bring the left foot to the ground. Take your hands into your heart center, and you can give your right leg a little bit of a shake out, a little bit of a release. And then just come to the top of your diving board. On an inhale, lengthen and lift your arms up tall, breathe in mountain. And as you exhale, cactus open, baby back bend. Inhale to reach back up tall, gaze is forward. And on the exhale, hinge out from your hips and control your swan dive to our forward fold. Inhale halfway up. Plant the hands, step back to your plank. Go right to down dog or this time, exhale halfway down, press to the tops of the feet. Inhale upward facing dog, suspending the weight of the body on the tops of the feet and the hands. Roll your shoulder heads down away from the ears and the back. Open up through the chest. And then from here, we can take it back to down dog as we're ready. Plug right into those alignment points, into those strength points, friends. Feel into the hands. Think about what's happening with your elbows, biceps, with your head. Feel the length in your spine for the hips lifting up and the heels actively pulling down. Inhale, take your left leg back up, find three-legged down dog. 
Feel that press of your heel up to the wall behind you, front of your left hip bone pointing down and back. Deep breath in, and on your exhale, bring your knee over to your right elbow or tricep. Shoulders up above your hands. Awesome with that breathing. Inhale, reach it back up nice and tall. And as you exhale, bring your knee to your left elbow or tricep, shoulders above your hands. Here for a couple rounds of breath. Inhale, reach back up. And on the exhale, step up into that low lunge position. Once your knee is over your heel, we rise up high crescent lunge. Nice work, friends. So think about stabilizing off the bat, those thighs pulling in. Your back heel off the ground, you're on the ball of the foot. And then find that strength through your left leg, pressing down to the ground, your upper leg wrapping around the knee, your glute pulling back up away from your knee. Pinkies forward, thumbs back, setting your shoulders up to relax down away from the ears and the back with that gaze forward. Take the in-breath here, and then with your exhale, twist to the left. So left arm behind you, right arm forward. Spine is straight up in space. Nice breathing. Our next move is to exalt. So left hand either grabs the right hamstring or the back of it goes to your low back. Right arm lifts up, gaze can go up with it, playing with the balance. And as you're holding on to that, friends, find that the part that you can soften into. For me, it's kind of those facial muscles relaxing, feeling the strong base here. So breathe into that exalted uh, warrior, and then uh, exalted lunge rather, and on your exhale, we're going to take it into that beggar's bowl. So back knee hovers off the ground, reach your arms forward, keep the spine up nice and tall, tone those thighs in towards center line. And use your breath to stay with it. Last round of breath. We're going one-legged mountain, so bring the arms, right knee lift up nice and tall. And as you draw that right knee up nice and tall in space, feel that right thigh bone plugging back into the hips. Full length of the body, from your left foot all the way out through your fingertips. Focus your gaze on an object that's not moving that helps with your balance. Now for our warrior three, you can bring your hands into your heart center and then start to take your spine to a half lift and press your heel behind you. You could also have that block on level three for your right hand, left hand to your left thigh or both hands to your left thigh. Awesome, friends. And I say point that front of the right hip bone down, your toes down, your heel back, so your hips are squared in space, even though they are in doing you know, different things. One's lifting back and up, and one is down to the ground. If you want, swim your arms forward. Last round of breath. Rise up, one-legged mountain. Breathe in. Nice, guys. When you're ready, just bring the foot down to the ground. Give your legs a little shake out, a little release. Awesome. Nice work, guys. From the top of the diving board, inhale to reach the arms wide and tall. And on the exhale, hinge out and take that swan dive to your forward fold. 
Okay, for gorilla pose, you can walk your hands underneath your feet so your toes are touching your wrists. Okay, back of the hands are to the ground. Or you can wrap your forearms back behind your calves, the bellies of your forearms with your fingers going down the back of your ankles. Let the weight of your head release. In both of these, you are engaging a bind with your body. And in a bind, we are pulling and pushing against our own body. The end result here is that length in the back of your legs and then that beautiful length in your spine. You're looking for levels of sensation that make sense for your body. No need to overdo it. We can definitely get deep, but we want to do so on a sustainable level. Last round of breath. Release the hands. Take it to your plank. You can go right to down dog or exhale halfway down to Chaturanga Dandasana. Press to the tops of the feet. Inhale, upward facing dog. And then we'll meet back into that down dog. Bring yourself to your sit bones. Swing your legs forward in space. And then take the weight all the way down onto your back, bringing your knees in towards your chest. And as you get your knees in towards your chest, you can wrap your arms around your knees and just give yourself a little rock side to side. Awesome, friends. For your core muscles, lift your legs straight up in space. Grab against the hamstrings and lift the head and shoulders off the ground. And then when you're ready, you can extend the arms straight up in space. If you need more support for your neck, you can take one hand back behind the base of the skull here. Nice breathing. Nice. Release down. Recline cobbler's pose, Supta Baddha Konasana. So bring the bottoms of the feet together. Let the knees go out wide. And then just relax the weight of the arms. Relax the weight of the head. Feel that deep breath moving through the body. And then interlace your hands behind the base of your skull, and we'll take the legs out to a lift where they're just up off the ground and they're lengthened. Feel your low back pressing to the ground versus there being an arch in your low back. And then keep in your left leg extended, bring your right knee in, and twist your left elbow towards your right knee. Lift those shoulders off the ground. Switch it out. Reach your right leg forward. Now twist your right elbow in towards your left knee. On your exhale, release down. 
And just find a really simple full morning stretch, reaching the legs all the way out in front of you, the arms all the way back overhead behind you, and rolling out your ankles, rolling out through your wrists, wiggling out through your fingers and through your toes. Gather your knees, grab your hamstrings, and then reach up and guide yourself to boat pose. So we're on in this balanced position right here, lifting up nice and tall through the spine. And as you find that length back and up through your spine, you can let your hands pull away from your knees. Let your shoulders gently tone together back behind you, bracing your upper spine. Knees can be bent in boat in our Navasana, or you can lengthen your legs out on a diagonal. Try to relax through your face again. Think about those places that you can soften here. And then peace sign fingers will grab onto your big toes and we're gonna do a bound boat pose, but then take the legs out wide. And you're looking for that balance of your legs kicking and pulling forward, and then your arms pulling back against it and those shoulders getting toned in towards one another. If you fall out of it, no worries, just come back and try again. And then we'll do a bow and arrow motion with our legs. So your right leg is going to be the arrow that you're pointing out. And then with your left hand, you're going to grab the bowstring and you're going to pull back on the bowstring with your left hand. So your left hand is in towards your shoulder. And as you are in this role of the archer, try to focus on that length in your spine while you're here. Okay, switch it up now. So your left leg is going to be the arrow that's pointing, and then your right hand is pulling on the bowstring. So your right hand is pulling back towards your shoulder. And again, while we are the archer, find that length up through your spine. Excellent, friends. From here, cross the ankles, and then come forward and find your downward facing dog. Once we've got that down dog in place, we'll inhale to reach the right leg up tall, three-legged down dog, and then open the hip and bend the knee on the exhale, draping the toes down over to the left as your knee lifts up. Watch that you're not sinking into your left shoulder. It's on level with your right. And then you want to let your left heel point directly back behind you so that left leg is nice and strong. The front of your right hip bone is pointing over towards the right side of the room. And then we're going to take a little flip here into wild thing. So you're going to pivot with your left hand, and then you'll plant your right foot to the ground behind you. Left leg is extended. I'm on the knife edge of it. Lift up through the hips, and then reach that right arm forward in space. And I'll give you another view of this. So it's almost like you're doing side plank with your left hand and the side of your left foot. You're just keeping that right foot rooted as you reach your right arm back. Lift up through your hips. Awesome, friends. Another round of breath or two inside of that lift. And then you're going to turn and make your way back into that downward facing dog. Lift your right leg back up tall. Breathe in. Three-legged down dog. And on your exhale, step your foot up to a low lunge. For warrior one, walk your feet out a little bit wider. And then drop the knife edge of your left foot to the ground. Bring your arms up in space. 
Awesome. You can have your heels on a balance beam, or I like to have mine a little bit wider from one another. The back edge of your left foot can point a little bit out to the left and in front. Arms come up like you're in a high crescent lunge. And your hips are taking that twist as you press off your back leg, that left hip is coming forward. Start to swim your hands behind you. Interlace your fingers down at your knuckles. Inhale the knuckles down as your chest opens up. And on the exhale, bow into humble warrior. Right shoulder towards the inside of that right thigh. You can rest your shoulder onto the thigh. It can hover up above, or again, it might make its way towards the inside. Let the weight of your head totally relax down from here, and then extend and reach up through your knuckles. The heels of the palms could be touching one another or it could be opened out wide. And then you can always bend your elbows forward slightly. Nice breathing. Inhale to come back up into that warrior one. And on your exhale, cactus your arms open. For eagle arms, bring your right elbow in front of you and then wrap your left elbow underneath the right. Look for the palm wrist or thumb of the right hand to hook onto. Take the weight into your right foot and then draw your left knee up tall in space. And as you bring that left knee up in space, we're gonna start to make eagle legs. So wrap your left thigh around your right thigh and then sit down, keep your spine straight up in space. Pull the elbows up away from your chest. You could have that left foot flexed to the side, or you could press the outside of it to the outside of your right calf, or wrap the toes back around the back of the calf. And you're looking through your forearms, just focusing and staying with that breathing. If you drop lower, spine gets taller. Shoulders are right above the hips. From the end of your breath, friends, rise back up one-legged mountain, maybe extend that left leg forward, and then swim back to your low lunge, step to your plank. On your exhale, come halfway down, press the tops of your feet, inhale upward facing dog, and as you exhale, tuck your toes and come back to your down dog. Use the inhale to reach your left leg back up nice and tall in space, three-legged down dog. And then on the exhale, We'll open the hip, bend the knee, and drape the toes down over to the right as the knee lifts up tall. Balance through your shoulders here. Again, front of your left hip bone pointing towards the left wall. Right leg nice and strong. Heel is pointing directly back behind you. So for that wild thing, we're going to flip the dog now. So you pivot with your right hand, plant your left foot back behind you. And then it looks like you're doing side plank. You're on the, out, the outside edge of the right foot. The leg is extended, and the right hand is below you. Left arm is reaching to the front. Gaze is up in space. Awesome, friends. Lift up through the hips. Find that breathing. Press down to the ground. Lift away. And then when you're ready, take one more inhale here. And on your exhale, just turn back into your three-legged down dog. You're going to lift that left leg back up nice and tall, three-legged down dog. And on your exhale, you can step up to low lunge position. Good work. Drop the knife edge of your right foot into the ground for warrior one. Again, heels could go out a little bit wider from one another in space. And then gaze is forward. Draw those arms up nice and tall. Shoulder heads relax down away from the ears and the back, taking that twist through your hips. Swim the hands behind. For our humble warrior, interlace your fingers at your knuckles. Inhale the knuckles down as your chest lifts. 
And on that exhale, bow forward, left shoulder towards the inside of that left thigh. You can definitely hover, hover above or rest onto it. Weight of the head is relaxed down here. Elbows can bend a little bit forward. And stay strong with those legs. Good base below you. Right on, a couple more rounds of breath. Inhale, come back up into that warrior one. And on your exhale, cactus your arms open. For eagle arms, bring the left elbow in front. And then wrap the right elbow underneath the left. Look for the palm, wrist, or thumb on that left hand to hook onto. For, we'll take it into one-legged mountain. So draw your right knee up in space. And from here, we'll set up those eagle legs. So the right knee's up, and then you wrap the right thigh over the left thigh. Get strong in that left leg as you sit into that one-legged chair. Unlike chair where your spine is leaning forward with eagle, spine is straight up. Draw those elbows up away from your body. Just looking beyond your forearms. And yeah, if you drop it a little bit lower, think about the spine reaching up nice and tall behind it. Last round of breath. Rise up one-legged mountain. You can extend your right leg forward. We'll swim back to low lunge on the exhale. Step back to your plank. Drop it halfway down. Inhale, upward facing dog. Tuck your toes. Press back into down dog. From here, child's pose. Take your knees out a little bit wider towards the edges of your mat from that tabletop. Tops of the feet are to the ground. Big toes draw together and then lower your sit bones back towards your heels. Forehead to the ground with your arms in front of you. Easy breathing. Feeling the weight of the body, just relaxing. Inhale up into your tabletop, and then just swing one of your hips down to the ground. We'll take the legs forward in space, and then meet up on our backs. And once you get down to your back, you can just draw your knees into your chest, wrap your arms around your knees, and give yourself a little rock side to side. Weight of the head is just relaxed. Awesome, friends. 
Take your elbows down into the ground at your sides and reach your legs straight up in space. You can stay right here. You can even take the hands to the back of your legs or lift the hips up onto the edge of a block on level one. If you'd like to move this to shoulder stand, press into your elbows and then peel the hips off the mat and bring your hands onto your low back. They're pretty much right at the point where your low back meets your, the top of your pelvic girdle. And then we want to check that the weight is not on the neck in shoulder stand. So the weight of the pose is on your elbows, is on your shoulders, and then the, head, the base of the skull is relaxed to the ground. Clear airway to breathe with. And then we can take this into plow, letting the legs lower back behind us in space. Keeping hands too low back or releasing hands down to the ground. Some, our legs will hover, others, your feet will touch the ground. You can always experiment with bending the knees versus having the legs lengthened. And then just a slow motion vertebrae by vertebrae roll down into the ground. Once your hips land, take the peace sign fingers to your big toes or the hands to the edges of your feet and open this up into happy baby pose. So the knees bend out wide and then you're pulling down on the frame. Bottoms of your feet are shining to the sky and you're just rocking side to side, trying to get that low back, the hips into the ground or close to the ground. Take your feet into the floor at hip bone distance from one another. Reach your arms down along your sides. Step your heels in until your sit bones can brush back against your heels. And then on an inhale, start to peel your hips off the ground, lifting up into bridge pose. You press down into your elbows. Bring your shoulders in just a little bit closer to make a shelf for your heart. Any variation you want with your arms is fantastic here. Just keep those hips up nice and tall. Spread out into all corners of your feet. If you have your gaze open and you're looking at your belly, you can see the rise and fall of the belly as you work that ujjayi breathing. That ujjayi breathing, it's a diaphragmatic breath. So it's, it's more than just the chest breath that your body typically does during the day. It's that singer's breath. vertebrae by vertebrae or just release down to the ground and then with the right foot to the floor take your left ankle over the top of your right knee and for reclined pigeon you can interlace your hands around the shin or the hamstring of that right leg pull the knee in towards you left hand goes into the gap we've created between the legs and then right arm wraps to the outside of the right leg will find some flexion in your left foot. And this is dorsal flexion where your toes are pointing back in towards your shin and then your heel is pointing towards the right. Your knee can gently flex forward in space and you can have a little side to side rock if that feels good for you. Beautiful breathing. Uncross that left leg, take it flat out in front of you. Hug the right knee up towards your right shoulder. 
And then we'll let the left hand pull the right knee down over to the left, roll onto the outside edge of your left hip, and reach to extend your right arm to the right. Take your gaze out across your right fingertips. Let the body relax towards the ground as you work that breathing. And then coming onto your back, we'll switch that out. So now your left foot is to the ground, right ankle over the top of your left knee or thigh. This is that reclined pigeon now for your right hip. So interlace your hands around the left hamstring or around the left shin. Pull the knee in towards you. Find the flexion in your right foot and let your right knee gently flex forward. Maybe just some easy side to side rocking. And this one feels fantastic for the low back as well. You're getting just a massage, kind of that same rocking when just both knees are in towards your chest. Awesome. Cross the, uncross the right leg, send it flat out in front of you. Hug your left knee up towards your left shoulder, and then your right hand will pull your left knee down over the left as your left arm reaches over to the, uh, rather, your right hand will pull your left knee down to the right as your left arm reaches to the left. Take this last spinal twist, friends. Let your left shoulder relax down towards the ground. Find your breathing. And then as you're feeling complete, bring your knees back in, wrap your arms around them, and just give yourself a last little hug. We'll move into our final resting pose, our corpse posture, our Shavasana. So making yourself nice and comfortable, allowing the body just to come into this relaxed place of stillness, lying flat down to the ground. You can feel the weight of the feet just relaxing open. Legs heavy to the floor. Feel the weight of your arms resting. Hands relaxed. Your back just pressing to the ground relaxing through the belly, releasing through the chest, through the arms, feeling the weight of the head nice and heavy to the ground, releasing any tension in the face, 
And we can let go of controlling the breath at this point and just allow the body to take back over on the breathing. We'll be here for a couple of minutes in stillness and quiet, and then I'll bring us back out of it and we'll complete our session. Start to move your fingers, start to move your toes. Deepen your breath as you stretch and reach your arms to the back of the room and roll out your ankles and roll out your wrists, just a full morning stretch. Turn the weight of your body onto its side into a fetal position, just curling up and relaxing for a moment. And then meet me in a comfortable cross-legged position or whatever pose you'd like to end class with. For your cross-legged position, scooch to the front edge of your sit bones, pulling the flush away or walking back. And then on an inhale, reach and extend your arms out wide and tall. And as you exhale, bring your palms together and then draw your hands down into the heart center. Friends, thank you so much for joining me for yoga today. I hope you have a beautiful rest of it. The light in me greets the light in you. Namaste. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Um, as always, uh, please click like and hit subscribe and share the video. That helps out a ton. Um, if you would like to make a donation, I've got my Venmo ID in the description. And if you're not in a place to, no worries. This is totally my gift to you. Uh, I'm also leading a yoga retreat to Costa Rica with my friend Katie Shifkin. So the dates are August 1st through the 7th, 2021, and we have a few spots left. But I've got all the details in my website, so just check it out. Um, other than that, uh, take care, and I will catch you guys next time. All right, much love. Mm -hmm.